Object-based sound combines audio information with metadata. But why would you want that? And how does it work? Since my intro video on immersive and spatial audio, I've made detailed videos on a variety of subjects, including 5-1 surround, ambisonics, binaural audio, but I haven't gone into more detail on object-based audio, at least until now. As a quick refresher, what is object-based sound? With typical stereo or surround sound, we represent the location of different sound sources by playing that sound at different volumes through our various speakers. If you want a sound to come from directly in front of us in a stereo system, we can play it equally in the left and right speakers, giving the illusion the sound is coming from the front. That's the channel-based approach. The downside of the channel-based approach is that we're locked into a particular channel layout. While you can play stereo content on a 5.1 system, even with upmixing, you won't get the full advantage of having a surround system, and converting 5.1 back down to stereo requires careful downmixing. Object-based audio seeks to be the best of all worlds on all types of sound systems. This is done by representing each sound source as an object. An object contains an audio track as well as metadata. That metadata can describe various qualities of the object, including a position and 3D space, with an appropriate decoder, that object can be placed in an appropriate loudspeaker, whether you have a stereo system, headphones, or a full 3D surround system. That flexibility has allowed various object-based solutions to advertise themselves as end-game solutions for immersive and spatial audio. Let's break down how modern object-based solutions actually work by digging into the most popular one, Dolby Atmos, which can be found in music, movies, and in video games. Atmos supports up to 128 channels, 118 of which can be used as objects. We'll come back to those other 10 channels in a minute. To mix, we can take individual mono or stereo sounds and define them as objects. We can then pan those objects around a fully 3D space. As we talked about in the intro, whether you have a simple stereo system, a soundbar, or full surround setup with height speakers, an Atmos decoder can determine the most appropriate speaker or speakers to play back each object to get the best experience. That idea goes beyond the home theater and into the cinema. In a typical cinema, you generally have dozens of surround speakers to cover the full audience with sound. With a channel-based approach, those speakers will be dealt with as arrays, so groups of speakers all play back the same sound. With Atmos, we can individually address each speaker to create very precise sound imaging for our objects. While Atmos primarily uses objects for better sound spatialization, there are some other use cases I want to quickly touch on. One example is MPEG-H, which is designed for use in broadcast. While MPEG-H does support the use of objects for 3D audio, it also provides additional benefits, such as flexibility for the user. For example, MPEG-H can be used to deliver commentary in multiple languages and let the viewers select their preferred option, or even turn off the commentary. This can all be done without interrupting the rest of the audio. Let's go back to Atmos, though, and those 10 channels we can't use as objects. Dolby Atmos, like many other object-based solutions, including MPEG-H, is built on the audio definition model, also known as ADM. ADM is a universal standard that defines how to contain audio data and accompanying metadata into a single file. In addition to sound objects, ADM files allow you to define channel-based beds of audio. With Dolby Atmos, the first 10 channels are reserved for bed audio, which is typically used for a 7.1.2 bus. The remaining 118 channels can be used for additional beds or objects. While objects are great, we might not need full spatialization for every single sound. For example, dialogue is often contained just the center channel. Other sources like ambience and reverb are also often in multi-channel formats to begin with, so it would be unnecessary to convert that into a bunch of objects. This type of hybrid approach is pretty typical of modern object-based solutions. Much of the sound can be contained into beds, and objects are reserved for the sounds which need the most precise localization. For example, you want, might want a helicopter flying overhead to be very clear and defined. As I mentioned earlier, we have the ability to incorporate multiple beds into our 128 channels. This provides some additional advantages. For example, you can split your dialogue into a separate bed from your music and effects. This is pretty typical for films with international distribution, as it makes it easier for localization studios to dub the film in a foreign language. 
Atmos and other ADM solutions allow those separate dialog and ME embeds to be delivered as a single file. Going back to the object-based side of things, you may have some very valid questions like, how do we cram 128 channels of audio into modern video formats? With the modern digital cinema packages used in theaters, that isn't too much of an issue. A feature-length film can contain hundreds of gigabytes of data, so 128 channels of audio, even uncompressed, is pretty inconsequential. Atmos information is actually stored in a separate file from the main DCP and requires Dolby hardware to decode it and maintain synchronization. DCPs will contain a 5.1 or 7.1 backup in case the theater doesn't support Atmos or there's an issue with the Atmos stream. While cinemas may not struggle that much with audio, it becomes a different story for consumer equipment. For physical media, you're limited by the bandwidth of Blu-rays or DVDs, as well as the physical connectors like HDMI. If you're streaming content online, bandwidth becomes even tighter, and again, it has to be shared with video. To address this, Dolby has two solutions. The first is regular old data compression. Dolby uses a proprietary audio compression algorithm known as AC4. It's a successor to the older AC3 and EC3 codecs, which were used by Dolby Digital and Dolby Digital Plus, respectively. This allows more audio information to fit through the same pipeline. The second solution, and the more interesting one in my opinion, is referred to as Dolby Spatial Coding. Spatial coding uses intelligent processing to reduce the total number of channels actually being delivered to the decoder. It starts fairly simple. For example, if you have multiple audio beds, they can be combined into a single bed. It's also pretty rare that you would actually use 118 objects simultaneously, so any tracks not being used are simply dropped. If you're crazy and do want 128 objects simultaneously, Dolby still has you covered. Dolby's research has determined that our brain can only fully process about 16 distinct audio sources at one time. That means multiple objects that are fairly close to each other can be grouped together and their position averaged then delivered as a single object. The more objects you use, the more aggressively spatial coding will group them. Just to be clear, this type of compression only happens for consumer delivery. Even a home theater enthusiast with way too much money on their hands will probably only have a 9.1.6 system at best, so you're really not losing too much since the number of speakers is more of a limiting factor compared to a proper cinema. There are plenty of other factors to worry about with Atmos, like downmixing, binauralization, loudness metering, and more. I'm currently working on a series on mixing in 5.1 surround, but once I'm done with that, we'll dive into object-based mixing and all of the extra concerns you need to deal with in, when you work in formats like that. But anyway, that's it for this video. If you like this video, uh, if you want to see more, definitely hit that like button. If not, feel free to hit the dislike button. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those down in the comment section down below. And as always, if you want to see more videos like this, including that 5.1 mixing series that I'm currently working on, definitely hit that subscribe button.